Okay, guys, now we're going to jump into uh, part of four, kind of part of five, uh, talking about orbitals. Now, an orbital is a 3D region around the nucleus that has a pro high probability of holding an electron. Now, what we have and what we saw in the Bohr model, and what Bohr was missing, um, was we didn't know exactly. We knew the, the electrons existed outside the cloud, but we need to look more in detail to it. Now, we saw that we quantized the energy levels, and we saw that we had specific amounts of energy for specific electrons. Now, we found out that they were energy levels, and that those energy levels can be broken up into sublevels, and the sublevels are broken up into orbitals. Now, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so it's a 3D region around the nucleus that has a high probability of holding an electron. It's where an electron's going to be. Now, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that we can't know the exact velocity and location of an electron, but we can narrow it down to a high probability. Now, the sublevels are broken up into S, P, D, and F. Okay? The sublevel S has one orbital, two electrons in each orbital, so one times two is two. P is broken up into three orbitals, which three times two is six, so it can hold six electrons. And D has five orbitals, which are broken up, or we have times two, which gives us ten electrons. F broken up into seven, so we have fourteen electrons possible in that sublevel. Now, the look of the orbitals. The S orbital has a spherical shape. It's round, like a basketball. The P orbital has a dumbbell shape. When you put, remember that the D sublevel has three orbitals, so therefore it's, these are the three, they're all put together like that. Then we have the D orbital, which we, or D sublevel that has five D orbitals. And you have to put all of those together to get the D sublevel. And then we have F, which has seven orbitals, which put all those together and we get the D or the F sublevel. We use these orbitals, sublevels, um, to write electron configurations. Basically, what an electron configuration, and the formal definition is the arrangement of electrons in an atom, but specifically it's like writing an address for all the electrons. Okay, we know where we have a high probability of seeing them and we're just narrowing it down. Now, each element has a very unique electron configuration. And the electrons, what they do is they fill the lowest energy levels first. Okay, and then what we're going to do are ground state electron configurations, which is the lowest energy arrangement of the electrons. Now, rules that we have to have for writing electron configurations. Off-ball principle, an electron occupies the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. Okay? Now, beginning in the third energy level, the energies of the sublevel begin to overlap. Okay? And we can see that we have the order over here. Now, we're going to use our periodic table and we're going to talk about sublevels and how we fill and how we use the um, periodic table to write electron configurations later. So right now we don't need to really look at the um, specific order. You don't have to memorize it. You have to use the periodic table. Now, the exclusion principle says that no more than two electrons in the same atom can occupy the same place at the same time. And the Hund rule says that orbitals of a sublevel are each occupied by one electron before any orbital is occupied by a second. And lastly, for the rules for arrangement of electrons, all unpaired electrons must have the same spin. So let's look at an example of these rules. Now, we see that the first uh, lowest sublevel, slowest orbital that can take electrons is 1s. Now, there's only thing in the first energy level is the sublevel s, and we know that it has one orbital, so it can only take two electrons. Electrons are represented by arrows, so here, in our first energy level, we see we have two electrons, okay? And they have opposite spins, meaning 
the arrows are pointing away from each other. In the second energy level, we have the S and P sublevel. So, first we have to fill the S because it's the lowest. So we fill it with two. And then we have P. Now we see with the S's, they only have one orbital, so they only get one line. In the P's, P has three orbitals, so we draw three lines. Now we only have one more electron, so we write it as the first arrow. So if we look at this, we can see that this would be the arrangement for, we have five electrons, which would be boron. Here, we see we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, so that would be the electron configuration for carbon. Now, looking at the rules, looking at the Hund's rule, we see that we have to fill each orbital before we fill a second. So that's why we have this arrow going up, and then in the second orbital, we have another arrow. Okay, if we put that arrow over here, going down, it wouldn't work. It would be wrong because it violated one of the rules. And we see again down here, we see we have three electrons in the 2p, so we have to put one in each orbital before we put a second one over here. Now, there are two ways that we write electron configurations. You can either write the orbital notation, that's where we just saw it, it's where an orbital is written as a line, the line going across. Each orbital has a name written below it. That's where we saw the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p. Those were the names. And then we draw the electrons as arrows. Okay? And they go up and down. Now, secondly, we can either write it as electron configuration notation, which we write the number of the electrons in the sublevel is added as a superscript. So instead of writing 1s and drawing two arrows, arrows we would just write 1s2 and put it as a superscript. Superscript means that it goes on top. Now, the order for filling the sublevels, we use the periodic table. And we should have made one of these in class. Not, come in and talk to me, and we'll make one. Now, they're broken up into what we call the S block, the D block, the P block, and the F block. Okay? Now, we set these up and we see that they're on the periodic table. The S block is groups 1 and 2. The P block is groups 13 through 18. The D block is groups 3 through 4. And then the F box or the lanthanide and actinide series below. Now, we use this to fill the sublevels fill and write electron configurations. So basically we start at the top and we'll count until we reach our atom that we're trying to write the electron configuration for and then we stop. Now how do we write electron configurations? Okay, First of all we have to figure out how many electrons are in the atom. We have to figure out what sublevel is the element in. So does it finish in the P block? Does it finish in the S block? Does it finish in the D or the F? Okay. Then we have to draw out lines for each orbital beginning with 1S and ending with the sublevel that's identified. So we follow our order and then we add arrows if we're doing orbital notation to the individual orbitals until all the electrons have been drawn. And this is for orbital notation. If we do it for electron configuration notation, we would just write the superscript.